If you've ever traveled overseas, you've probably found it confusing, at least when you first get to another country, in trying to figure out what something costs in your currency. So, for example, if you happen to travel to London and you're, you're a U.S. resident, you're trying to figure out, well, you know, how much does that sweater cost in U.S. dollars? I see a quote in pound sterling, but I don't know, you know, in order for me to do the comparison, I have to figure out what it costs me in the U.S. And so one of the reasons it's so confusing to do exchange rates, and if you've been confused either as someone traveling abroad or as a student, you're not alone. Even uh, I've been confused at this too because I don't do it all the time. So it's confusing because there are two ways to quote a currency. For example, exchange rates can be quoted as the number of US dollars it takes to buy one pound sterling, or it can be quoted as the number of pounds it takes to buy one US dollar. And there are several other reasons it's also confusing. The convention used for quoting currencies is not intuitive. The notation is, is kind of odd from what we're used to thinking about. Also, some currencies are quoted as the number of dollars per unit of the foreign currency. Others are quoted by the number of units of the foreign currency to buy one dollar. And it turns out that for some currencies, the quotes may differ from the spot and the futures markets. So let me get into some terminology here. So a direct quote is the price of one unit of the foreign currency in the domestic currency. So from the US perspective, uh, $1.50 to buy one pound is a direct quote. An indirect quote is the price of one unit of the domestic currency in the foreign currency. And it's the inverse of the direct quote. So from the US perspective, it's a uh, one divided by $1.50, which equals 0.667 pounds to buy one US dollar. And that's an indirect quote from the US perspective. The problem with this terminology is the $1.50 per pound is a direct quote from the U.S. perspective, but it's an indirect quote from the British perspective. Because if you happen to be, if you happen to be British, your domestic currency is the pound and the foreign currency is the dollar. Perhaps a better way or better terminology is um, American terms and European terms. American terms is a direct quote from a U.S. perspective. So it's $1.50 per pound sterling. European terms has the dollar quoted in terms of the foreign currency. So that 0.667 pounds to buy one dollar. Okay. Now keep in mind, it doesn't have to be a European currency as the other currency. It could be Japanese yen, it could be Mexican pesos, etc. Here's the quote convention. And I found this confusing. And when I was teaching a class in this, I was trying to figure out how to do conversions. And, and I was um, quite, um, quite perplexed because of this, this notation. The way currencies are quoted is that there is a symbol and then a slash and then another symbol. The first symbol, and these are for each currency, so EUR is the euro symbol, and then a slash, and USD is the dollar symbol. The, the um, currency that comes before the slash is what we refer to as the base currency, the symbol that comes after the slash is what we consider the quote currency. So in this example, it's the number of dollars, that's the quote currency, it takes to buy one euro. So the base is euros. Um, so if it took one euro um, and the quote was $1.19, right, then it would take $1.19 to buy one euro. The problem with this is that 
when we do equations, and this is not an equation, this is a convention for quoting currencies, but it looks like an equation, the item after the slash is usually the base. Think about things like dollars per pound, right? You go to the grocery store, you know, you see, uh, you know, 250 per pound, right? Pounds happens to be the base, and this happens to be the quote. So it's exactly the opposite. So when you're doing conversions, it makes it confusing because you have to unlearn the notion of seeing that slash and thinking about a mathematical equation. So, for example, um, suppose an item costs $100 in the U.S. How many euros does it cost? Say this quote here, right, um, is a dollar nineteen, right, dollars to buy one euro. These are uh, what we consider American terms. Then mathematically, you would think well, you would multiply these together, right? This is in the numerator. This is in the denominator. They would cancel each other out, and you would get the number of euros. But that's actually not correct, and that's why it's quite confusing. Okay, because it doesn't follow standard mathematical notation. It's actually the case uh, that a hundred dollars is eighty-four point oh three euros, a hundred divided by a dollar nineteen. However, if the quote happened to be in European terms, point eight four oh three um, euros to buy a U.S. dollar, so quoted this way, then you would multiply. Remember, when you're converting from one currency to another, you either multiply or you divide. So you have to, you have to know which one to do. So let's take a look at some, some spot rate quotes. You can see that in red, these red arrows and red terms, this is quoted in American terms. So the Australian dollar, right? You can see that the USD comes after, there's no slash here, but that comes second. The pound is quoted in US dollars. The euro is quoted in U.S. dollars, and the uh, New Zealand dollar is quoted in U.S. dollars. So those are American terms. But we also have, of these seven, three that are quoted in European terms. The Canadian dollar, right? That is not a European country, so you can see these are still considered European terms. The Japanese yen and the Swiss franc, okay? Certainly the Japanese yen makes sense to quote this way. In, in European terms, because you can see it takes over 110 Japanese yen to buy one US dollar. If you take the inverse of that, it'll be less than 0.01, so it would be very hard to deal with that. All right, but this is what makes it confusing. Some quotes are in American terms, some quotes are in European terms. Okay, and to make, make it more confusing, as I mentioned before, um, some currencies are quoted differently in the spot in the futures markets. The Swiss franc and its ticker or its symbol is CHF is quoted in European terms, okay, US dollars slash CHF in the spot market, but it's quoted in American terms, CHF slash USD in the futures market. All right, so this really does make it confusing when you look at exchange rates. All right, how do you do the conversion? This is sort of the best I can do to help you through the process to give you something to remember. Remember, you're either going to be converting to the base currency because the original price is in um, the quote currency, or you'll be converting to the quote currency because the original price is in the base currency. So if you're converting to the quote currency when the price is in the base currency, multiply by the exchange rate. So if the sweater cost 100 pounds in London and the exchange rate between pounds sterling and dollars, that is uh, GBP slash USD equals a dollar 39, this is the base, this is the quote, you want to multiply. So it's going to be a $139 sweater in the US or in US dollars. Likewise, if you're converting to the base currency when the price is in the quote currency, 
divide by the exchange rate. So suppose boots in the U.S. cost $100. How much will they cost in, the Me in Mexican pesos, which is um, its symbol is MXN, if the exchange rate is MXN slash USD equals 0 0.05. So here you're going to divide and it's going to be 2,000 pesos. So you've got to be a little bit careful when you're doing conversions. And, you know, when you go over to uh, another country, at least for the first day or two, you're going to find it somewhat confusing in terms of doing the conversion. Not terrible because if you're staying in, you know, in London for a couple of weeks for vacation, you have a little bit of time to adjust. But if you happen to be traveling from place to place to place, okay, not quite so bad now in Europe because they all use the euro except for um, Great Britain and Switzerland. You know, um, you're not switching currencies quite so much. But in the old days, you'd be going from Italy where you'd have lira and you'd be going to Germany where you had Deutschmarks and you'd have to think about you know, different exchange rates. So I hope this clarifies a little bit about why it's so confusing, and I hope that um, this makes it a little less confusing.